first of all, thank you, Joanne, for inviting me and um, Mars to participate in today's conversation. I think it's a very timely and important topic, and um, I'm glad to have a chance to talk with you a little bit about what Mars is doing in the space of climate action. Um, very quickly, just a couple of perhaps fast facts about Mars. Um, most people know that we are a chocolate company. We produce a lot of um, fabulous treats like M&Ms and Twix and Milky Way. What people don't know is that a few years back we acquired another confectionery company called Wrigley. So we also produce a lot of chewing gum and starbursts and chewy treats. But Interesting fact, I think, um, is Mars is actually the world's largest pet care business. So we produce more pet food and also hire more veterinaries, veterans, um, veterinary associates um, than anybody um, in the world, um, which I think is a pretty remarkable fact. And then we produce a lot more food for people as well. So rice, like Uncle Ben's and other products as well. So it's a diversified business. It's a growing business. We have about $35 billion in sales on an annual basis. And last fast fact is we continue to be family owned and family run. So we are in the fourth generation of family ownership with um, the Mars clan very actively involved in the shape of our business and the direction that we're moving in the future. Now on to sustainability. Um, last year we announced a $1 billion commitment to enhancing our initiatives in the sustainability space. And that commitment includes a series of things in uh, environmental stewardship, a number of things related to social engagement, human rights, and unlocking opportunities for women, and then a series of things related to health and well-being. For today's conversation, we'll spend time talking just for a minute about some of the Healthy Planet um, ambitions that we launched last year. One um, is a commitment to climate action. And here we have looked at sort of what the science says is necessary for our business to operate within planetary boundaries. And we've set goals that align with that science. So our ambition is to reduce our absolute greenhouse gas emissions throughout our entire value chain by about one third by 2025 and by about two thirds by 2050. Again, um, that's what the science says is necessary. It's an incredibly robust ambition, not incremental, what we see many companies doing, but um, what we believe to be necessary. Um, relatedly, we're also focused on water stewardship. So here, um, and I'll show you a chart in just a moment, um, you know, we're looking to cut our unsustainable water use um, by about half by 2025 and remove it entirely from throughout our supply chains by 2050. And then last but not least, there are very few corporate commitments around land use, um, but we think that as we look at sort of the impacts, the climate impacts of our business, we've got to have um, something related to land use within uh, the work that we are doing in the future. And so when we look at the planetary boundaries model, we understand that we can't, we the collective we, can no longer continue to encroach on land for agricultural purposes. So we've set a commitment to hold our land use flat while we hope our business is going to continue to grow. Now, looking quickly at the business, and I should say this is an illustrative chart. By no means is this um, a precise look at uh, where we are sourcing and what we are sourcing all around the world. But for the purposes of conversation, we know that there are roughly 10 um, raw materials that we use that have about 80% of the impacts on our, our environmental uh, commitments. So climate change, water, and land. And so we're really focusing on sourcing strategies with then these 10 commodities all around the world. And when we look at climate action, um, again, sort of in the, the rule of three, the three things that we're most focused on, we're focused, of course, on science-based targets. We're focused on commitments to renewable energy. And we're focused on really leaning in um, from the top of our organization to our lobbying on Capitol Hill with advocacy for climate action. And I'll tell you just a little bit more about each of those. 
So we've talked already about um, you know, science-based targets. Um, you know, we have looked at and studied the Paris Agreement. Um, we have worked with the most recent and most uh, um, evident science around the, the reality of climate change. And we've set our targets in accordance with those. Again, you can see here, it's a little bit hard to read, but um, on that graph, you can see sort of where our primary impacts are. About half of our climate impacts come from agriculture. About a third come from land use change, and then about 5% from packaging, and, and, and the list goes on. But we're really focusing our efforts where we've got the, the largest amount of impact and where the science says we need to be moving. Second thing that we're excited about is we're seeing really a, a growing business case around renewable electricity use. So we were the first company in the US to make a commitment to eliminate 100% of our greenhouse gas emissions from our direct operations all around the world. Um, so that's 420 sites in 80 countries, and we're aiming to do that by 2040. And we're making good progress. So, um, by the end of this year, we'll probably have 11 countries where we are using renewable electricity to power 100% of our operations. That's the case here in the US, where we've got um, a wind farm in Texas. Um, it's the case in the UK, where we've got a wind farm in Scotland. Um, we'll soon come online in Mexico. And um, we've got a number of deals that um, we're working on today um, in, in, in countries where renewables really aren't part of the, the current business conversation. So I think um, you know, what we're witnessing is a real business case um, for the increased use of renewables. We're making these deals. We're doing them directly. We're doing them for the long term. And um, we're witnessing a real return on the investments, which are exciting. I will also mention that we're beginning to put our brands in play um, with regard to climate action. Last year, during the UN General Assembly, um, our most iconic brand, um, M&M's, uh, launched a campaign called Fans of Wind. So they brought the brand voice into the conversation about climate change and about the need for climate action. Um, and I'm, I'm excited that we're going to see more of that in the future. So last slide. Um, final thing that we're really focused on, again, is you know, trying to lean into advocacy around the reality of climate change and the important business case for climate action. And you know, what you see is us becoming very uh, actively involved in a series of coalitions, like We Mean Business and BICEP, and we're still in. You also see our leaders, from a Mars family member and the chairman of our board, Stephen Badger, um, you know, speaking openly and frequently about um, the business case for climate action, writing and placing um, uh, his opinions in places like the Washington Post. And you see our CEO doing similar things, um, writing about the, the business case for, for climate action during um, the World Economic Forum this year, among other examples. Um, and you know, we think that um, you know, it's important that we do this kind of advocacy um, on a recurrent basis and that we also make sure that our lobbying initiatives um, here in the US and elsewhere are aligned with the reality of climate change. And so you'll find our lobbyists, when they do go to the Hill, um, they are regularly and frequently talking about climate change. And I think that's it. Thank, Thank you. you.